All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we've got a Tamiya MFC 03 to look at. Now, this video isn't going to be a full tutorial, but we will go through a quick setup. For a detailed guide, there's quite a few to choose from on YouTube that take into account the different radio setups too. Right, the MFC 03 is a combined ESC, light controller, and sound unit that needs a four channel or more stick radio to operate. The system inherits a lot in terms of controls from other much older Tamiya boxes, which makes it a bit of an odd thing to use. If we open the box, we can see all the bits we have inside. You do get quite a lot of stuff, but not all of it is all that useful unless you're fitting to a specific truck. First, we have lots of parts trees. You get the coupler mounts, all sorts of spacers, rear light boxes, and all sorts of chrome bits to update the older trucks. A nice speaker box and a speaker mount, and replacement fuel tanks with somewhere to mount the control panel. The thing is, most of this lot isn't going to be used in most builds, and in the case of the wrecker, all we're going to use is the speaker mount. A bit crazy, really. It might be better if Tamiya sold the parts tree separately. In the insert box, we have all the good stuff. First out is the motor for the vibration unit, which I'm not going to bother fitting. Other than testing to see how thoroughly you've thread locked all the screws, it's not really much use. It's really violent, even on a low setting. Then we have a nice bag with servo tape, foam pads and other useful things. And another bit that on lots of kits won't be much use. We've got the weight for the vibration motor. Then a mount and fixings for the coupler. Useful for older kits, but most of them come with an MFC friendly coupler ready to go. Then we have some screws, they're just the normal Tamiya assortment to put together the bits you probably aren't going to need. A little tools bag with a micro screwdriver and plastic adjuster, more screws, nuts and washers, the LEDs, now they're colour coded ready to connect to the MFC, the truck manual and the MFC manual tell you which colours to plug in where. Yet more screws and washers. The control box, mainly used for the power switch and volume control, it does have a couple of other things too, with a mode select and a couple of buttons. Here we have the main event, the MFC-03 itself. Now it's in an oddly ever so slightly translucent black case with lots of connectors. It's not as bad as it looks though, with the instructions and the labels it's really easy to plug everything in. In the case of the critical bits, they only fit in one place. Also in the box we have a set of metal LED retainers, only used on some kits rather than the plastic ones. Next is a speaker, which is just a 4 ohm 5 watt jobby. It's quite adequate and fits the mount the MFC comes with. However, you could happily replace it with a different 4 ohm speaker, or even a couple of 8 ohm in series, depending on what's going to fit your truck's layout. Then we have a nice set of labels for the LEDs. Once you've worked out which LEDs you need for your truck, you can label them to make it easy to reconnect if you need to later. We have a nice yellow warning sheet that no one's ever going to read, but the cartoons are nice. And lastly, we have the manual. There's lots of text in there with diagrams, which on first inspection can seem like a lot to take in. But remember, there's several languages in there, so if you only look at the English, it's fairly straightforward. Unfortunately, some of the English isn't quite as clear as it could be. Thankfully, there's a number of proper setup guides on YouTube that demonstrate how it all works. In most cases, once you see the stick twiddling live, it all starts to make sense. So, for your money, you do get quite a lot of stuff, which is nice. It's all the usual high Tamiya quality, it's just a shame in most cases you don't need most of the plastic parts. As mentioned, we're not going to do a super detailed guide, there's lots of videos and websites around for that. Instead, we're going to get stuck in and see what happens. The MFC is already attached to the chassis with some servo tape as per the Wrecker manual. We'll need the wires bag, control box, speaker, sticker pack and a radio. Now, the owner of this truck wants to use a pistol grip radio, which won't work with an MFC due to the way you access functions with the stick stirring and fiddling about with the trims. Having said that, we will be making it work in the future. That's a way off yet, though. Instead, we're going to use a typical stick radio. 
if you like the easy life, a twin stick transmitter with manual slider trims is more or less plug and play. This is a Turnigy 9X with OpenTX firmware, so we have eight very configurable channels and digital trims. Still quite usable, but we'll need a little bit of thought on the setup. First job then is to connect the control box. It's held together with two screws that get removed so we can separate the halves. On some models you won't need the box as the panel fits directly. On the wrecker though, we do need it. Then in the sticker bag we find a nice chrome sticker that sticks to the front of the panel. We'll need to carefully remove the bits that block the holes, lifting them out with a knife. Then peel and carefully line up with the panel and stick it down. You want to be fairly accurate so it doesn't rub on the volume knob or get in the way of the buttons. Next we need to find the three cables that connect to the panel. It might have been nice if they'd used a single high density connector or perhaps just stuck a processor in there and used a three or four pin cable for power and some data. But they didn't so we need to find the three, five and seven pin cables. At least they're easy to find as all the LEDs and the coupler switch are two pin. And speaking of LEDs, you do get enough to complete most stock setups on the Tamiya trucks. In the case of the really long trucks, the rear LEDs might come up a bit short, but Tamiya do sell packs with some longer leads. The coupler switch is a direct fit on the newer kits, but if you have a truck that doesn't need it, you need to check the bits that come with your truck. With the wrecker, you get a battery extension and a nice little jumper. It needs to plug into the connector on the MFC for the coupler switch. Otherwise, the MFC thinks you're pulling a trailer, which is going to reduce the speed and acceleration to simulate the extra weight. Usually when someone's wondering why their truck's a bit sluggish, it's missing the jumper. With the three leads plugged in, we have a rather unruly loom. At some point we're going to sleeve it with some nice sleeving, but for now I'm just going to bodge it with some wire ties. Not a good long-term solution, but it means we can start playing with the kit a bit sooner. The box can go back on, then we can connect it up to the MFC. Right, back to the truck, and we'll start with the servo leads from the MFC. They are labelled with J numbers, which in the manual tells which stick and direction they're expecting. This means the channels can be different depending if you're using a Futaba or Spectrum, etc. Or if, in my case, you're using OpenTX, you can set them up to be in any order you like, so there is a little bit of manual reading required. Next, the steering and shift servo plug into the MFC just above the servo leads. Again, you're going to need to read the manual to figure out which one you need to plug them into, but it is fairly simple. Control box now, and despite it having three leads, it is really easy to hook up. Basically, if the connectors match, then you've got the right one. Three pin to three pin, five to five, etc. We might as well plug in the speaker so we know it's working. Now it's got a nice big brown connector that plugs into the brown connector on the MSC. Again, nice and simple. And well, that should be enough to see if it's going to work. We will need a battery, of course, a 6L Naimai with a Tamiya connector. And I think we're also going to connect up the motor so we can see if the direction matches up. We wouldn't want to finish the model, only to find it's going backwards. Because we have the motor connected, it's also a really good idea to lift the rear axles up off the ground, just in case it throttles up and drives off the bench all by itself. The MFC is pretty safe, but you never know. Right now I have the radio set up to act like a bog standard twin stick. There's nothing special going on at all. In theory, with a bit of luck, it should work for the most part as is. But we are skipping a very important step. If we turn the MFC on, it'll run through its power-up sequence. Then we should find the steering works. And if we move the right stick down, we should be able to start the engine. Now the left stick should run the wheels forwards when moved up. And when moving down, it should do the brakes on the first pump. And it should drop into reverse on the second pump. So that all seems to be working, but what's the problem? Well, as soon as you start trying to use the more advanced features with lots of stick stirring and trim sliding, it's all going to fall apart. This is where we really need to read the manual. 
there's a whole calibration routine you need to follow to set up the MFC so all the features work as they should. It involves pressing a button on the MFC and waiting for some blinking lights. Then you can move the sticks in a specific order so the MFC can learn how far they go and where the center point is. To make it easier to see what's happening, we can also plug in the left and right indicator LEDs. It doesn't matter if we connect them to the front or rear connectors, they both come on at the same time. The trick is they give you a bit more information as to what's happening than just the red light on the control box. In the manual, it tells us what the wire colors are for the functions and which connector they should connect to. Then on the other page, there's a diagram so we can find the connector on the MFC. You actually have to do the calibration twice. Once for the normal stick movements, then a second time so it can learn what the movements are with the trims set at the same time. On a transmitter with digital trims, rather than use the trims, we set up a switch for the dual rates. So with the switch up, it's in normal mode, but with the switch down, it gives us more throw on the channels, which as far as the MFC is concerned, is like having full trims too. There's a lot of guides around, mainly for Spectrum radios, that go into detail for the setup if you need more help. It's a bit of a pain, and these days you would expect a far simpler setup, but the Tamiya stick steering dates back to far simpler radios with just four channels, and for whatever reason they decided to stick with it rather than design it around a modern radio. When done, all the extra functions should work properly, like changing the horn sound. That's the left stick left with full trim to toggle between the two horns. Quite neat, but these days you would expect it to be far easier to set up. Right, next up, the three speed gearbox. The MFC can learn the servo positions for the gearbox, which in theory should make it easier to set up than relying on the transmitter trims and endpoints. A good idea, but we do have to do yet more stick stirring to get it set up. To get into the setup, we have to move the right stick to the top right with full trims, then power up the MFC. Then we can use the left stick to set the servo position, and again use the right stick to the top right to set it. The indicators blink with whichever gear you're currently setting, which is quite handy. After the third, it's going to store the position and return to the normal running mode. Now when we use the left stick, the servo jumps straight between the three gears, rather than letting you grind gears by not fully engaging the clutches. I think by now you probably get a general idea on the setup. It works well, as long as you follow the instructions very carefully. If you miss a step or make the wrong movement, the MFC will happily end up with some weird configuration, making you wonder what's going on. That just leaves the LEDs. Now we quickly covered the indicators, but the MFC has loads of outputs for all sorts of lights. Now I'm not going to hook them all up here, as it's going to end up a bit of a mess, but you have the headlights, indicators, speed slash running lights for the roof, brake lights, reverse lights, and various other ones. In most cases, it's more than enough to make quite a good setup. All the outputs are constant current, so if you really mess up the wiring and manage to short something, it's not going to cause any harm to the MFC, which is very good. But it does limit what you can connect to get the best from your LEDs. On the other hand, if you stick with Tamiya LED packs, it's all completely plug and play. For now, we're going to leave the MFC with the battery and control panel lead sleeved and ready to fit as we build up the rest of the wrecker. There's still a vast amount to put together, electrics, the bodywork, plus I've still got to look at the Tamiya lift motor kit. There's lots to do. And now we're going to do a little bit of time travel into the far future where the wrecker is up and running, just to show an MFC working with no stick stirring and a pistol grip radio. We've got some custom electronics hidden behind the big panel that takes over control of the MFC's inputs. So instead of us having to remember which combination of trims and stick movements, the electronics does it all for us. So with it powered up to start the engine, all we need to do is press a button on this little remote. And then the pistol grip transmitter works just as you would expect. There's a lot more to it, but I think that'll do as a little bit of a teaser. 
Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.